CRISPR's changed a, a, yeah. everything. And you've been at the center of it. And so uh, I wonder, I mean, can you take us through this? I mean, how it's changed, w w your role in it, how uh, it's changed the way you operate. Uh, and then we'll talk about what it, I mean, there's you know, what it can do and what it can't do or what right. it might do. So, yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to say that CRISPR is kind of a, a placeholder, um, uh, an icon mm -hmm. for a bigger set of things. Yeah. And it's, in a certain sense, there's a whole revolution that occurred in molecular biology that many people missed. Either mm -hmm. the, the new generation missed mm -hmm. it or some journalists missed it. Mm -hmm. And so then they got they caught the CRISPR bug mm -hmm. you know, because it has a cool name yeah, and yeah. it has some cool people involved. Yeah. And, yeah. But really it represents a number of other editing methods and then uh, and then non-editing ways of doing genetic genomic modification. Uh -huh. So uh, CRISPR and its editing uh, buddies, uh, mm -hmm. nucleases, mainly subtract. They remove stuff. Okay. Uh, they're good at it. Um, but there's addition. There's precise editing, which yeah. CRISPR isn't particularly good at yet. It's not very precise? Typically, it's low efficiency when you're trying to use it precisely. So uh -huh. if you look at most of the gene therapies that, yeah. that use CRISPR, they're mm -hmm. aimed at removing... Uh, a gene, okay. uh, knocking it out. Uh -huh. um, you can do it, especially if you're doing it in animals. But but we already had ways of doing precise editing. It goes back, <clears throat> I don't know, to the 80s at least. Oh, really? Um, <clears throat> just a little less efficient. And that's the th interesting thing, is people sometimes forget what a little efficiency will do. So yeah. CRISPR is maybe four times more efficient than the previous method. Uh-huh. Um, maybe you know five, six times less expensive, which is a different axis than efficiency. Sure. So those two, that's enough to get people excited. But, but CRISPR also represents the revolution in, in reading DNA. So it's mm. hard to edit DNA, it's hard to edit a manuscript mm. if you can't read it, okay? Yeah, okay? And we just take for granted that we can now read things, not four times more efficiently, but 10 million times more, more efficiently. Oh. And so it's like, that somehow that message is so overwhelming, we have to say, oh, well, it's actually CRISPR we're interested in. Yeah, CRISPR is okay. a real hit. Okay, so that's that's my disclaimer caveat yeah. about CRISPR. Yeah. But now, now I'll say how great CRISPR is. <laughs> so so uh, it represents to me a set of tools that are out there in the biosphere. And one of the reasons that biological engineering, bio, molecular biological engineering is, is so advanced so quickly is because not only do we do we inherit all the legacy stuff from the electronics and physics revolutions, mm -hmm. computer-aided design, uh, microfabrication, mm -hmm. and so forth. <clears throat> we also inherited uh, billions of years of trial and error, which resulted in these exquisite nanomachines. And mm -hmm. that's what CRISPR is. It's a nanomachine that essentially you could program in the computer a series of 20 ACs, Gs, and Ts mm -hmm. that will take it to a corresponding position a that's set right. of Gs, As, and Ts, and Cs in the genome and do something there. Yeah, typically cut it, typically me. cut it. So it blows me away. That and that's what this nanomachine does. And it's very complicated and it's very sophisticated and very efficient. Um, and if you tried to make that from first principles, mm -hmm. um, it, would be, it would be quite challenging. Um, and you might not even think to make it from yeah. first principles. But they're lying around. There's like an alien spacecraft that's in your backyard yeah. without yeah. too much in the way of instruction yeah. manuals, but fairly intuitive once you start playing with them and you just harvest these things. So so our, our role in it w was um, we had made a series of ways of reading DNA, you know, like maybe 30 different ways of reading DNA and we were involved in commercializing it. And, and that's the stuff that's increased by a factor 10 million. That's the, yeah, yeah. That's the reading. And yeah, so nanopores and fluorescent. Mm. And uh, that's been those hugely the main important. Okay. And those, those have been, those are the kind of background without mm. that. And then that was used to discover uh, a lot of uh, of this uh, alien uh, technology, mm -hmm. witchcraft, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that's out there. And then some of the things that, dis that, that were discovered was CRISPR was, was junk DNA. It was basically repetitive DNA yeah. that nobody knew what it did. And then eventually, once we learned what it did, it turned out to be the least junky part of the genome. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think back to the beginning of the Genome Project where everybody was trying to shut it down. Uh -huh. Like 90% of the people were opposed, the scientists were opposed to it because there was this junk DNA. Well, uh -huh. CRISPR came out of that junk. 